People wouldn't believe what was going to happen until the flood actually arrived and took them all away. So shall my coming be. Two men will be working together in the fields, and one will be taken, the other left. Two women will be going about their household tasks. One will be taken, the other left. So be prepared, for you don't know what day your Lord is coming. Life was filled with guns and war, and everyone got trampled on the floor. I wish we'd all been ready. Children died, the days grew cold, a piece of bread could buy a bag of gold. I wish we'd all been ready. There's no time to change your mind. The sun has come, you've been left behind. Now, it's a regular thing for me as I read through Scripture, and I've shared quite a few examples previously, just how so much can hinge on one word about just what that one word actually means. And an example of that is just Leviticus 19, 18, this, just the, the, the great command that we're talking about here, just this word as, right? So love thy neighbor as thyself. So is this talking about loving your neighbor as yourself because it is yourself? Or is it telling us that you love your neighbor as you love yourself, right? This has just been an example. Now, another example of this is in Genesis 26 and verse 4. And the Lord's talking to, to Isaac about the promise. I'll pick it up at verse 3. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee. So this is the land of Canaan, and my understanding is that Isaac never left Canaan. And I will be with thee and bless thee, for unto thee and unto thy seed, right, thy seed, I will give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swore unto Abraham thy father. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven so this word as is like this word as so does this word as in leviticus mean you love your neighbor the same as you or love the neighbor because it is you and just like here in genesis 26 4 does this mean that isaac's seed is going to multiply because they are the stars of heaven or multiply as much as the stars of heaven because the way this is coming across to me i'm absolutely being led to think that this is how isaac's seed is going to multiply it's going to multiply as as the stars of heaven that's how isaac's seed is going to manifest as the stars of heaven because they are in fact the stars of heaven isaac seed just like what we read in isaiah 14 that the stars of god are the seed of isaac now just read this in hebrews 11 and it, it's really really caught my attention big time so hebrews 11 is the same chapter that we read about enoch Enoch being translated, right? The same Hebrew word as carry over in Acts 7. So Jacob, Isaac, and Abraham were translated, right? They were translated at Shechem. Same word, carry over. It's translated that Enoch was translated that he shouldn't see death, right? So it's all about it's all about faith. This this chapter is all about recapping some characters in the old testament how their their faith was rewarded no right and in verse 8 we read about abraham for his his faith he received the inheritance and it was by faith he sojourned in the land of promise the land of canaan the land that jeremiah 7 is leading me to think and a whole host a whole host right of scriptures in the old testament that's leading me to think now that the land of Canaan 
is the celestial land. But we read in verse 13 that with this word earth, right? And I read it this morning. I thought, mm, because it's very, very interesting. It's, it's, it's very interesting indeed is Hebrews 11. So verse 9, By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange as in a strange country, right? So here we go with this word strange again. Joseph made himself strange. Dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. So this word tabernacles, so they were dwelling, they were dwelling in these in these tabernacles. So the word tabernacle, we're back to this tent, aren't we? We're back to this tent, tent, and he stretches out the heavens as a curtain for a tw tent for them to dwell in. So this word tabernacle, it means tent, tabernacle, made of green bows or skins, right? Or skins or other materials. And this word tabernacles here, right? So they're dwelling. They're dwelling in tabernacles. And I'm being led to think that Isaac's seed is the stars of God. Isaac seeds the stars of God and he along with Jacob and Abraham are dwelling in tabernacles and that word tabernacle means tent or skins. Skins, right? And then we come into this pattern, this pattern of the temple of Jerusalem that I read right through Hebrews that just gets me every time. So, when we have a look at this word tabernacle, so they're dwelling in these tabernacles that are tents, that are made of skin, and these are, well, Isaac is the celestial. Isaac's seed are the stars of God. So if the stars of God are dwelling in tabernacles made of skin, well, I don't know, it's just where I'm being led right now. But in verse 11, through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed, Isaac, and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful whom had promised. Therefore sprang there even of one, and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the stand which is by the seashore innumerable, Isaac see that you will be as the stars in, in sky. Isaac see being the stars of God. These all died in faith, not received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers, right? Here we go with strangers again and pilgrims on the earth. So I read that, and I thought, Jeremiah 7 is leading me to think that the Lord's house has a gate, which is the gate of heaven, and the Lord of hosts, the Lord of the celestial bodies, is going to cause them to dwell in this place if the celestial hosts of the Lord amend their ways, executing judgment between a man and his neighbour. And I've just read in Hebrews as well, and in James, that they're not to judge. In the New Testament, it seems the judgment between a man and his neighbour and his brother is not a good thing. The Lord of hosts will cause them to dwell in this place, in this land, that I gave your fathers forever and ever. The land of Canaan being the Lord's house, whose gate is at the gate of heaven, a celestial house. The Lord of hosts, the Lord of the celestial bodies, will allow them to dwell in the Lord's house. So I read Hebrews 11, 13, and I see that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. So they're all on the earth. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were all on the earth. So I thought I'd have a look at these words, stranger and pilgrim. So the word stranger is translated out as stranger 10 times, strange and 
host, a foreigner, a stranger, an alien from a person or a thing without the knowledge of, without a sharing, new, unheard of, one who restricts, receives and entertains another hospitably with whom he stays or lodges a host, right? A host. And the scriptures we read in Matthew 25, when the Lord Jesus Christ talks about himself, right? The Lord Jesus Christ talks about himself being a stranger and strange gods. And that's where we see host. Gaius, my host. So Gaius, my stranger, right? Mm. That, but we come into these scriptures that I really, really want to get into because this seems to be about bringing the two into one, removing the middle wall of partition between us, right? Thus making peace, making one, making one new man. But at the time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. So in Hebrews 11, 13, we, they were strangers, right? They were strangers, aliens and pilgrims on, on the earth. But this word pilgrim, right? This word pilgrim, whoa, this is pretty incredible, this one. One who comes from a foreign country into a city or land to reside there by the sides of the natives. A stranger, a stranger. Sojourning in a strange place, a foreigner. This word strange, man. In the New Testament metaphor, in reference to heaven, right, as the native country. One who sojourns on the earth. So I read that and I thought, okay. So we come back to Hebrews and they were pilgrims. They were pilgrims, right? They were strangers. They were strangers on the earth because heaven, heaven's their native country. So we come back to Genesis 26 and Isaac's seed are the stars of heaven. Isaiah 14 is telling us about the stars of God. Isaac's seed being the stars of heaven and Isaac a stranger and a pilgrim on the earth. A man and his fellow? I'm not sure because, because we're reading that Isaac's seed are going to be as the stars of heaven. So they're going to manifest as the stars of heaven. That's what this is absolutely leading me to think. So their home country, their homeland, is as the stars of heaven. But in Hebrews, we're reading that they're on the earth, but they're strangers and pilgrims because their homeland is as the stars of God. But somehow... They're stuck. They're stuck on the earth. They're pilgrims on the earth as they sojourn seemingly in the earthly land of Canaan, not the celestial land of Canaan. So what's going on here? So I just read this this morning in 1 Peter 1, and it just straight away, here it was, right? This word stranger again. It's just one and stranger at the moment. It's everywhere. 1 Peter 1, 1. Peter, an apostle, right? Peter is a messenger of Jesus Christ to the strangers, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia. We're not going to try and say that, Asia and Bithynia. So the, all these places here are where strangers are scattered abroad. And Peter, Simon Peter, probably my favorite apostle, disciple. I love Simon Peter an apostle, a messenger of Jesus Christ, potentially an angel, because we read in Acts 12 when Rhoda constantly affirmed, right? So in verse 14, and when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate, right? So the celestial entry into heaven, not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the entry. And they said unto her, Thou art mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. And then all of these people that were in this house, including John, whose surname was Mark, and I think I've just found out 
that this John is actually Mark who, who wrote who wrote the Gospel of Mark. I, that blew me away when I found that out. Does everyone know that? I couldn't believe it when I found this out. But this, th th these are some pretty high-profile people in the New Testament, right? So they know what they're talking about. You've got John Mark and you've got Mary, right? The mother of John. Th th these people are, st are in this house and after Rhoda was constantly affirming that Peter stood before the gate, well, they said, no, nah, you're mad, Rhoda. You're mad. And they just wrote her off saying, it's his angel, right? It's his angel. It's Simon Peter's angel. So Simon Peter, Simon Peter, who's an apostle, a messenger of Jesus Christ, has his own angel. And this same Simon Peter... Well, he wrote two books, and the first of those books is addressed to the strangers, and he announces himself as an apostle, which means a messenger, and messenger also means angel, and Simon Peter has his own angel. He announces himself as an apostle, a messenger of Jesus Christ, and he's talking to the strangers, that are scattered throughout all of these regions. And that word stranger, well, it means those whose homeland is heaven. So Simon Peter is talking to beings seemingly that are on the earth that belong in heaven. Elect, right? Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit. So he's talking to the strangers who are the elect. Now, this word elect, I'm being led to think that the, the elect are celestial beings, picked out, chosen, chosen by God to obtain salvation through Christ. Christians are called chosen or elect of God. The Messiah is called elect as appointed by God to the most exalted office conceivable. Choice select the best of its kind, all class, excellent, preeminent, applied to certain individual Christians, right? So this word elect means to be chosen, basically what I can see here. And the first time we see it, it's translated out to chosen in Matthew 20, 16. So the last shall be called first and the first last for many shall be called but few are chosen. For many are called, but few are chosen. So this for me potentially is reading that the Lord calls many people, but few actually heed his words and few enter actually into this narrow gate, but, but few are chosen. Few are of this elect, right? But in Matthew 24, 31, and he shall send his angels, right? His angels, his messengers, potentially his apostles. Simon Peter has his own angel, right? A man and his fellow, maybe, with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect, right? His elect, where are they going to gather together his elect from? The four winds and from one end of heaven. And from one end of heaven to the other this elect and Simon Peter is talking to the elect who are strangers and strangers belong in heaven but they're on earth and that's what Isaac Abraham and Jacob were they were strangers and pilgrims that's the word here strangers on the earth and they were as many as the stars of the sky in multitude and Isaac seed is going to multiply as. They're going to manifest as the stars of heaven, Isaac's seed being the stars of God, and they are strangers and pilgrims on the earth, dwelling in tabernacles, tents, which are made of skin. And this word pilgrims, it means they're heavenly beings, the stars of God, but they're sojourning on the earth. And Simon Peter's talking to these strangers that are scattered on the earth, referring to them as the elect. And the Lord Jesus Christ is going to gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. And Simon Peter, he's one of these messengers seemingly, an apostle, 
of Jesus Christ. So is he one of these angels that the Lord Jesus Christ is going to send to gather his elect that Simon Peter is talking to and Mary, the mother of John, and John, whose surname was Mark, seemingly the man who wrote the Gospel of Mark, they're telling Rhoda that Simon Peter has an angel and they're assuming, they're thinking Rhoda's mad for hearing Peter's voice at the gate, saying that she's mad and saying, no, nah, you're mad, Rhoda. It is his angel. So now given all this, when we return back to Leviticus 19.18, Thou shalt not avenge, nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. So is this the person standing next to you, or is this spirit and flesh? The earthly man and the heavenly man. Isaac's seed multiplying and manifesting as the stars of heaven that we read about in Isaiah 14 who are the stars of God. We've got those stars, those celestial heavenly bodies dwelling as pilgrims on the earth and they're dwelling in tabernacles and that word tabernacle, it means a tent and they are made of skins and these heavenly creatures are dwelling as pilgrims on the earth and a pilgrim is a stranger or a foreigner whose native country is heaven as they are strangers sojourning on the earth and we've got Simon Peter who's got his own angel and John Mark and Mary telling Rhoda that she's mad because she thinks that she can hear Peter's voice and they just write her off as crazy saying it's his angel like it's just matter of fact that every man has an angel or it's just completely normal that Simon Peter has his angel his own angel so is this a man and his fellow and that same Simon Peter he announces himself as an apostle of Jesus Christ apostle meaning messenger, and messenger is also the same Greek word, G32, which means angel. So Simon Peter, he's an apostle of Jesus Christ, a messenger of Jesus Christ. Well, he's speaking to these strangers. So these strangers, their homeland is in heaven, but they're strangers seemingly on the earth, these regions potentially being the earth. Hebrews 11 is leading me to think that they are actually on the earth. So it seems to me we might be getting manifestations here of a man and his fellow because I'm just now led to ask, how can the stars of God be strangers on the earth? How can the stars of God be on the earth?